This is common sense. Um, and I quote one of our anatomy TAs. Mabuhay! This is Jenny with an H. Hi. I am sorry if I haven't been posting videos about OT school because we took a two week break between summer quarter and fall quarter and my family went to a short road trip or vacation and I, I have been trying to edit that video but until now I haven't finished it yet <laughs> but yeah um, and then when I got back to school we we're not that bombarded but we were challenged with assignments, projects, and group presentations right away. So believe it or not, we have about six groups and each of those um, have different members. So during the first week, it was hard for me to keep up because I have to make sure or I organize and I know who my group members are. But we're on fourth week now and I'm barely making this video because yeah, I'm kind of behind. But thank you for your patience. Um, if you're new to this channel, welcome. If you have been following my journey in OT school, welcome back and thank you for your support. Um, for those of you who sent messages on Instagram, Facebook, and comments in on YouTube, thank you so much for reaching out as well. I appreciate it because I know that people actually watch my videos. But anyways, I'm just happy that I'm able to help at least a few of you guys out there and ladies um, in your journey to learning OT or occupational therapy. So I finally got a notebook for my YouTube notes. <laughs> so pardon me if I'm going to be referring to this notebook a lot of times in this video because I want to make sure that I give you the enough information or complete information or good information and I don't leave out some stuff that are important for me to tell you. Now, I made this video today because some of you reached out asking for tips or suggestions on how to prepare for your grad school or OT school interview. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start with types of interviews out there. Some schools conduct one-on-one -on -one interview, basically you're only going to talk to one person that represents the whole OT program or the whole school. Um, others conduct group interviews or like a speed dating interview. Um, basically you're in a room and then one faculty member will come in, talk to you for about five minutes and then leave and then the next one will come in once again and then leave and then so on and so forth. Um, when I experienced this, there's a, there was about four or five faculty members that talked to me and two students. So they're trying to really drill you. Um, just be confident out there and be yourself. Another type is video interview, which was my favorite and the reason why I got into this school that I go to right now. They're awesome and I'm glad that I actually got into this school. Um, yeah, because as you can see, I love making videos. So I was able to show my passion and my interest and my creativity in the video interview that I um, made for that school. We were only given about 48 hours to film it, to edit it, and to turn it in. Um, but yeah, you can see that video on my channel page or if by now I changed it you can see it back all the way back in December 2017 so yeah good luck <laughs> so now I am going to talk about how to prepare for a grad school interview and tips to prepare for a grad school interview um, I'm going to give you five most common or common questions or potential questions that you might face in your interview and I'm also going to give you five tips to ace that interview. I'm not the best person to ask about these because I didn't really have that much experience in grad school interviews. I've only did about three in person and then one video interview. Um, yeah, because the first year I applied, I got rejected in all of the schools that I applied to and I didn't even get a chance to do an interview. The second year is when I got invitation from those schools. Um, so yeah, but I'm just going to give you 
tips based on my experience, okay? Alright, so first one, tell me about yourself. This is basically your bio. Um, just make sure to make it quick. Just allocate about one or two minutes in talking about your skills, your experience, and the things that you can offer the school. I know you have a bunch of things to talk about yourself, but try not to be boastful about it or brag about it too much. Just focus on the things that are really going to impress the interviewer um, and try to be humble. So <laughs> show your best, give your best, give a good first impression. Yeah, just focus on your positives. This is your time to sell yourself to that interviewer and to let them know that you really want to get into that school and that you're really um, worthy of their spot in that OT school program. Number two, this is the most common OT school question probably that you will encounter out there. In your own words or opinion, what is OT or what is occupational therapy? This will let them know how well you did your research about OT and how well you know about OT. Honestly, don't worry about this too much because us, even our professors, until now, we are still working on defining OT because it is a really a vast field. Um, you have a lot of settings to work on or work at and it is really hard to just give one definition of occupational therapy. But let me just give you what I think is a quick definition of OT and I code. I got this from our framework. It is basically a book or our Bible for OT and you refer on that thing a lot of times in all your classes and, or even in your future practice. So I'm gonna give you a definition. OT basically is achieving health, well-being, and participation in life through engagement in occupation or meaningful occupation and we have eight context or environment where we are going to work on and I'm going to look at my notes because I don't want to forget anything um, one is ADL which, which is activities of daily living I ADL instrumental activities of daily living play work leisure education rest and sleep as well as social participation. So as OT, you work in those settings and you can't really pinpoint. There's a lot of occupations that people need to work on. Even I need to work on. So yeah. Okay, next one is what are your strengths and weaknesses? And how can you apply this in OT school? As well as how can the institution or the school benefit from these so these basically are things that you are proud of or would love to talk about um just like what i mentioned earlier things that you um told the interviewer about yourself would be this because these are your strong points now the weaknesses part um you can you can state your weaknesses but make sure to turn those weaknesses into strengths for example, in my interview, I told the interviewer, um, or in my job interviews, my weakness would probably be not being able or having a hard time saying no to tasks, responsibilities, and assignments because um, I'm actually the person that would prefer to do a bunch of things at the same time, at the same time, but I'll, because there's no such thing as multitasking. You just basically select the things that you focus on in one time. Now, for example, right now, I'm an OT school, first year OT school student. However, our schedule is not as busy as the second year and the PT first year students. So I have time to participate in activities. I'm a student. I'm also a member of the ASOTA, which is a student OT association and I signed up for the fall intramurals. I play volleyball, which I'm the captain as well. Um, I also signed up for basketball. I'm not a good basketball player, but I like working with 
our team and our classmates and I love spending time with our friends so I signed up for those I also sing at church so we have a few practices a couple times a month and events that we um, have to prepare for and sing as a choir also I volunteer at a shelter in the city where I live right now initially it's for school credit but uh, we are only needed eight hours per quarter but I think I'm gonna I'm going to be able to spend 20 to 30 hours this quarter in this assignment so those are the things that I have um, right now how are you going to turn those weaknesses into strengths I would tell my interviewer that Despite of me taking in those responsibilities, I do my best to manage my time properly and prioritize my assignments, my tasks, responsibilities according to the importance. School comes first. Your assignments, your projects, your homeworks come first. The rest, extracurricular activities, are secondary. So if you're not doing well in school, try not to do that. Um, but if you have time and you want to do those, participate in those and get involved in school. It is important that you embrace these weaknesses, um, be aware of them to make sure that you are actually um, using these to improve yourself and become a better student, occupational therapist, or a person in general. One way of keeping track of my schedule and my responsibilities and my task is keeping a planner. I used to use um, those planners you can buy from different places, <laughs> Target, Barnes & Noble, and stuff. But recently, I got into doing bullet journals. So I have different legends. I make my own spread sheets. Um, this is basically the whole semester, and I kind of cross out from September to December and then I would make a monthly calendar um, like this this is for October which is we are right now um, and then I would make a weekly spread so this was for September one of the weeks in September and then I would also have a list of assignments that I need to turn in the whole semesters um, my course my courses and my doodles as well as my trackers so habits that I want to work on as well as more weekly um, weekly spreads this is for this week, so we are on the second week of October and it's almost Halloween, so I kind of wanted to draw. Now, this is important. Um, there are times that you will feel down in grad school, so and you feel like you're such a failure, but sometimes you have to remind yourself that you're awesome. <laughs> Self-care and self-worth. So this is my favorite page. I made, I made this for my behavioral health or mental health class but basically these are self affirmations um, self affirmations over here and then positive thinking on this side every time I feel like not doing anything I would look at that and then also important thing is which helps me a lot I keep a task page for each week so this one was the first week that I made um, I wrote a task and then the due dates for each of the assignments and projects um, and then the following week over here, I kind of got lazy because the number of assignments and projects are piling up So all my tasks are here and then my due dates are here And I'm still working on crossing them out. We are about one-third through the quarter and Yeah, I have to like organize my life better. So yeah, that's how I organize my school schedule next question might be are you a team player? How well do you perform in team 
assignments or projects. In OT school, you're going to be working with a lot of people in different group projects, even in the OT setting because you're going to be working with other professionals such as PTs, STs, nurses, COTAs, and so on and so forth. So you have to make sure that you're actually a team player. If you're a person um, that have strong leadership skills, um, I think I am. So I told my interviewer that I I enjoy taking leadership roles and I can delegate tasks to myself um, or my group members and I'm open for suggestions and I try to listen to them and use those suggestions and opinions in order to achieve um, our goals or our purpose or complete our project. I sounded like the one I mentioned in my video interview but anyways now if you're a person that do not enjoy taking leadership roles which is totally fine and just want to be um, in the background or um, helping on the side assist the leaders or members you also have to make sure to tell them how yourself can contribute to the team and help your team members and your team achieve your goals because in grad school you'll be surprised how many personalities you're gonna encounter. There are people who are very outgoing, loud, and obnoxious like me. <laughs> or, um, but there are also people that are pretty passive and shy and would like or prefer to be uh, playing a supportive role. So you have to make sure to kind of adjust your loudness or your your drive to accomplish your goals according to your group's chemistry another thing is work ethic so in group projects there are also different people with different work ethics some finish their project ahead of time some wait last minute some have type a personality that would that wants to get everything perfect and set stone and go according to plan some are passive like what I mentioned earlier that won't contribute to the group that that would wait last minute or not contribute in the group at all I'm guilty of being all of those there are times that I would be like okay I need to finish all of these on this day or I'll have to I want to make sure that it is perfect or awesome or worthy of A but some days I don't feel like working on my assignments or especially on the weekends I try to just take that mental break I would end up doing my homework last minute so it really depends on the mood or ethic of your group members another question that I encounter is what are your hobbies, interests, and special skills? Now these are the things that you kind of left off or forgot on your bio and your strengths. You can focus on your special talent or skills. I usually talk about sports and music and gardening. So for sports, I would tell them I play volleyball, basketball, tennis, badminton, a little bit of table tennis, soccer. I know some rules because I coached EDBD soccer before. but I don't really like running, although I ran two marathons, but after that I messed up my IT band, so I stopped running. And then for music, I'll play piano, guitar, and drums. You can also say, especially in OT, creativity. What is your artistic outlet? You can be, you can say you're good at drawing, painting, arts and crafts, or in general, you know? Um, yeah. Okay, so now I would like to give you 5 tips to consider while you prepare for your OT school or grad school interview. First is dress to impress. So just like how you're going to dress for a job interview, this is how you're expected to be dressing in an OT school or grad school interview. As you can see right now, I'm wearing a polo shirt um, just to show you guys an example of a business casual. I added a touch of flower out there because 
I don't know, it's colorful. So, <laughs> OTs love colors. So, yeah. Boys, you, you're not gonna wear a hat in an interview or a Dodgers or Lakers shirt for your interview or, you know, wear a polo shirt, tie. If you want to, you can um, wear a coat or a suit as well. Just make sure you look presentable. Now, girls, you guys probably know by now how to dress properly, but yeah, um, no tank tops, no see-through top or mini skirt or short dress, and high heels. If you can, wear one or two inches. I personally don't like wearing heels, so I didn't have a problem with this. But some schools, after or before your interview, they would give you a tour of the campus or the facility. So you're gonna be walking. So make sure you're comfortable when you go on your interview and not wear those heels so you can walk properly. Next one, be confident. Yeah, make a good first impression because well, I believe that first impression lasts. So make sure you give a good first impression to your interviewer or your faculty member of the school that you want to go to. Energy! You're not gonna be talking like this. Hi, my name is Jenny. And yeah, I wanna, I wanna go to your school. Make sure you be confident, energetic. You're an OT. If you're gonna work with Pete's, you need energy. Or in any setting, you need energy. <laughs> so make sure you show enough energy and speak loud and clear, but not too loud or obnoxious that it actually annoys your interviewer. But enough energy that would show how outgoing you are. And also, good posture. Sit up straight, um, feet flat on the floor, don't shake your legs, try not to cross your legs, um, and eye contact. Make sure to actually look at your interviewer's eyes. It's weird because I'm looking at the camera right now. And <laughs> talk to them like you're actually going to talk to your friend. You want to make that confident eye contact. Now, I know you are nervous. I was nervous and I'm still nervous now every time I do presentations. Usually when I get nervous, I talk fast. Right now, I'm just talking fast so I can put all the information in shorter time as possible. But yeah, when I'm nervous, I talk fast. So make sure to take a deep breath and then relax and then explain. I usually have dry throat or dry mouth when I'm nervous too. So you can, it's okay to bring a water bottle with you. Um, just make sure to not be rude when you drink it in front of your um, interviewer. Or, or drink water before you go in an interview and moisturize your lips, I don't know. Next one, this is important but optional. But I did it so I learned more about my interviewers and the faculty members and the school that I would like to go to. Try to look for your school's mission or vision or statement and for example, to make man whole. That's your school vision. And figure out how you're going to incorporate yourself to fit that school's purpose or vision. Next one, research about their facilities. Some schools are located or have a single building and all their facilities are in different floors. Some school universities have, like mine, which I'm really glad and happy and blessed and thankful. Um, we have good facilities. We have different buildings that we go to, library, church, um, pavilion and lecture halls so make sure to know those facilities and let those interviewer know why you chose that school or why you want to go in that school according to the facilities they offer then now when you research about the faculty members usually OT programs would have about 6 to 15 I guess some schools maybe 20 faculty members just make an effort to do a quick research about their program or their specialty work, research, focus, um, and just to learn more about the your future professors. If you end up talking or having that professor as an interviewer, it'll be awesome if 
you have something to talk about with him or her about her spe or their special interest. For example, I interviewed for one OT school for an, for an OT school, and the interviewer was an active member or board member of AOTA, and as well as behavioral health. So during my interview, I was able to make a conversation um, about what she does. So I showed her my interest about her field. However, I didn't get in that school because I think because of my writing skills, which I am working on right now. Next one, in relation to your research about the school and faculty members, the interviewer might ask you if you have any questions about school or program or your interviewer. Make sure to have some questions ready. It doesn't have to be a 10 list questions, just one or two to make sure how interested you are and that you did your research and that you want to show them how you can contribute to their work or the school or the institution. Finally, not all schools do this, but be ready to write an essay, an impromptu essay. Bring a pencil with you and an eraser. If you have a lucky pencil, bring it, because I went to this interview and for the last 30 minutes, we had to write an essay. I forgot the question, but it was about the school, OT, and how you can contribute to that school. As an occupational therapist, you're going to be documenting a lot. So you have to make sure that you can show that you can do quick, critical thinking and share your ideas and process information quick and relate to your, your supervisor, peers, or even patients. So yeah, in addition to your application on OTCAS and individual personal statement for each of the school, you'll have to learn how to write an essay within 30 minutes, including all the brainstorm, writing, proofreading, and turning in, all in 30 minutes. So you have to learn how to do that. Because according to my professors and even my observation in settings, in different settings, Occupational therapists or therapists only have about, let's say, 10 to 20 minutes, not even, 5 to 20 minutes to do the documentation. In addition to your intervention, you have to allocate a small time to do your documents. So you have to make sure that you're able to think quick and write quick. Okay, so I know you're really nervous about this interview, but you're gonna be fine. You're gonna do awesome. If you don't get into that school, try again next year. Don't give up. If this is really your passion, try your best to get it and succeed. And let me know if this video helped you. You can send me a message on Instagram or here, comment down there. I would be happy to hear about your stories and your journey and your OT school application, research, interview, and OT school journey if you get into that school. So if you like this video and you find it informative, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have friends who are interested in going to OT school, feel free to share it with them. Every time I get a question about how do I prepare or how do I apply for OT school, I always refer them to my previous video which is the how I got into old school without GRE. <laughs> yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down there. If you have friends who have questions, also comment down there or send me a message on Instagram. Feel free to share it to your families and friends who are interested in learning more about OT, occupational therapy. And finally, don't forget to hit that red button and subscribe to my channel to get more updates about my or our journey in OT school. I'm going to include supplemental links of people I've been working with, OTs from different states, different country, um, down there. I met them through Instagram and I have been collaborating with them, which I am really happy and they were really nice. Yeah, if you get into the OT field, it's a small world. People are really nice. Um, yeah, we help each other. We mentor. We are mentee. I'm a mentee right now, but I'm also a mentor to other people. 
so I'm going to include some links down there for more information about your application process, your interview process, and OT school process. Salamat! Ambulance, we're next to the hospital.